Yes, folks, it's Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Hey, thanks for watching. It's very good of you. If you leave any comments and likes and subscribe and all that, because it helps, you know. Hey, and I like the comments, even the ones that insult me. Somebody said yesterday, what was it? And I was delusional with regards to the paranormal and my beliefs in the paranormal. I'm delusional, yeah. I didn't set up a church. I'm not a serial killer. I haven't had my wives decapitated. I haven't done any of that. But I'm delusional, yeah. Not Henry VIII and the people who uh, go to uh, that one of these big houses on a Sunday with a nice hat and a fancy jacket, yeah. Uh, discussing uh, this guy who was nailed to a cross. I mean, it's like showing one of uh, Al Capone's victims a Tommy gun. They are. Hey, so they've got a cross where they nail this guy too. It's all fiction, actually, because uh, the Romans did not nail people to the cross. No, they tied them to the cross because the death on the cross was by asphyxiation. Your body, slowly, it was a long, slow, terribly painful death, and your body slowly lost the ability to support itself and you and your lungs collapsed and you and you were as fixated you choked to death in any fact you know so that's how you died on the cross it wasn't by nailing it to the cross i mean if you nailed yourself to a door i mean you'd fall off wouldn't you because you it would just rip through your hands yeah well that's what would happen there's no doubt about that yeah so the, the, uh, you weren't nailed to the cross you were tied to the cross and anyway, the story is a complete fiction. I don't want to go on and on about religion, but somebody did say that they said I was delusional with regards to the paranormal. Those are my experiences, you see. My personal experiences. And uh, I write about that, and I've investigated it for a long time. I think they're probably saying because I used to manage the career and write the books of uh, Derek Akora, who no sooner did I get him to Hollywood and on television, he became a diva. And started faking it and doing seances with Michael Jackson's hat and communicating with, uh, I don't know, Egyptian mummies and various nonsense like that. Uh, you got to give it to him. He was a complete showman, a complete fabricated charlatan. But people liked it and he was put up to it by the producers, you know. So anyway, uh, I accept that people don't believe what I say with regards to the paranormal. My experience. Don't believe it. Believe what you experience yourself, if you will. Or you can go down the route of uh, going to one of the big houses with a, with a nice new hat. Eh? How about that? Anyway, uh, let me get on to the subject for today, which is going to be uh, transgender inmates. But before I do that, don't forget, on the 31st of January at 7pm here, yeah, here, will be live q and A. I I would like you to all join in ask me questions insult me if you will I mean I'm all right with that I don't object but I expect I might just fire back a little bit you know because if I say something I really mean it you know I'm not making this up this is this is as it comes to me you know and, and I'm doing what I can to make these little forays into the terrible subject of imprisonment which doesn't work by the way uh, I, I, I'm trying to make them interesting and amusing. So if you do like, please subscribe, enjoy, put the likes, all the rest of it, comments below, and you can get a copy of my book. That's linked below. Anyway, let me talk about transgender inmates. These are prisoners, who, who in, mainly in Scotland, not so much in England or, or Wales at the moment, or Northern Ireland, but specifically in Scotland, who've been allowed by the government of uh, Nicholas Stungun uh, who is allowing prisoners to re-identify as females. And there's one particular inmate there who is uh, going by the name of Isla Dyson, I, I believe, yeah, uh, and uh, whose original name is Graham, but who has re-identified as a female. His wife's complaining, by the way, he's married, yeah. His wife's complaining, she says that this man is very dangerous. He raped his wife, raped her. Uh, and stabbed her, so she was profusely bleeding, 
and uh, she was taken to hospital. He persuaded her not to make a complaint, which she deeply regrets, because he then subsequently went on to go and rape a number of other women, which has now seen him being held in prison on remand. And he's told them that he is re identifying as a woman. So believe it or not, Nicholas Stungun's team have decided that they will allocate him a place in a female prison. This is a man who rapes women, by the way. Big, six foot tall, 15 stone, strapping bloke with great big arms and muscular, whose, whose, whose victims are saying that they couldn't get away from him because he was that powerful. He held them down and ripped all the clothes off, then penetrated them. But what did he penetrate them with if he's a woman? Yeah. Well, he is anatomically completely male. He, he's, he's got it all. The todger, two dumplings, full meat and veg. It's all dangling down there. Unless he's prepared for action, then it ain't too much of a dangle, is it? If, if memory serves me well. Yeah. But uh, listen, that's what he's been doing. And he's in there. In, in prison, in, in, a, in a female prison. And his wife's saying, watch out, because this guy can't help it. He is going to be raping the inmates in the prison. I mean, it, it make, interesting, doesn't it? But don't you think it's ridiculous? Absolutely. I mean, where do we go next? I, listen, I've seen transgender uh, prison officers. I went to, uh, what was it, Holloway Prison, round about 1975-76. Went into the club there, and uh, I was looking around. There was this bloke sat at the end, immaculately dressed, nice tie. Looked a bit like a, a 1940s, 1930s matinee idol with brill cream, dark hair, short cut. Yeah, suited and booted. And I said to one of the staff who I, who I happened to know, because her, her, her husband was a, an officer at the scrubs where I was working, I said, who's that bloke over there? She said, that now bloke, that's one of the governors. I said, uh, yeah. I said, but uh, what's, what's his name? She said, it isn't a he, it's a she. She completely kitted herself out as a bloke, yeah, and was working as a governor at, at Style. And you, honestly, you couldn't tell. If you got up really close I suppose you'd be able to see that she wasn't sporting any facial hair or no obvious beard line or anything like that but just from a distance of about 10 yards about 20-30 feet she looked like a bloke so th it, this has been going on for the last 50 years hasn't it you know all this cross dressing but uh, wait wait till you get some of the jailers going into uh, into strange ways dressed up as women oh we've already got them yes except they are women yeah well that that's the wing hostess yeah today's wing hostess your wing hostess for this day is is jennifer jennifer is 23 years of age she's just five foot two she's 33 24 32 and she'll be looking after all your needs today. Sea Wing, are you ready, boys? Get in there. Yeah. So, seriously, I mean, how mad is this going to be? So, anyway, where it all ends, who knows? But definitely, they are reallocating men into women's prisons in Scotland because they're claiming that they are reappointing re themselves as women. One guy that wanted to reappoint himself as a woman, oh, and it, but he had all the equipment, the male equipment, was the Cambridge rapist Peter Cook. When he was on my landing at C2 on, in uh, the scrubs, said, uh, I, I want to be a woman. And I, I caught him a number of times on his hands and knees in other prisoners' cells uh, and I want you to just for a minute concentrate and say what would he be doing on his hands and knees in in other prisoners' cells? You got it in one. Hmm? Sucking the todgers. He was a strange character. Tried to kiss me. Mr Sutton, kiss me, kiss me. 
I love you, I love you. Ah, my bleeding head. You've just run it into the wall. Well, what do you expect, mate? There you go. That was the Cambridge rapist. He and he died in prison, actually. He didn't manage to re reallocate himself as a woman, but, I mean, these days, who knows if he got himself into a, a Scottish prison. He, he could have been Linda. Mm. Linda, the Cambridge rapist, and about raped about 30 women. Decided he didn't want to todger anymore and he was going to have something else. What a world it's... What is it coming to, eh? Anyway, don't forget to uh, make a dot in your diary. 31st of January, 7pm. Here we are. We're going to do a Q&A. You can ask me questions you want. Insult me if you will. Somebody insulted me about, what was it? Said, uh, oh, they thought that my uh, paranormal experiences were all nonsense. My experiences, you know. If you don't accept them, I'm perfectly happy with that. I mean, I personally don't accept the stories that we get told about other religions, you know. I just kind of don't believe them. Something about uh, just doesn't hang right with me. But if you want to believe it, get on with it. Uh, right, okay, here we go. That's a, that's a song dinger, by the way. There are people who tell me that it strikes terror into their hearts. There you go. That's terror. Terror coming. And we're talk, talking about terra firma here. That's the song dinger. And I'm going to sing your song now. It's based on the subject of today's uh, little rant. This is a song by uh, the Kinks. It's called Lola. It's about uh, cross-dressing, I believe. So, are you sitting comfortably? I'll bugger that up for you. I met her in a club down in old Soho Where you drink champagne and it tastes just like Coca-Cola Hello, Willie Cola She walked up to me and she asked me to dance I asked her a name and in a dark brown voice she said Lola Hello, L.A. Lola well, I'm not the world's most physical guy, but when she squeezed me tight, she nearly broke my spine. Oh, my Lola. Hello, well, hey, Lola. Well, I'm not dumb, but I can't understand why she looks like a woman and talks like a man, my Lola. Hello, L.A. Lola. Well, we drank champagne and danced all night Under electric candlelight She picked me up and sat me on her knee Said, little boy, won't you come home with me? Well, I'm not the world's most passionate guy But when I looked in her eyes Well, I almost fell for my Lola Hello, well, hey, Lola I pushed her away and I walked to the door. I fell to the floor and I got down on my knees. Well, I looked at her and she looked at me. Lola. Hello, well, hey, Lola. Well, that's the way that I wanted to stay. And I always wanted to be that way for my Lola. Hello, well, hey, Lola. Girls will be boys, and boys will be girls. It's a mixed up, muddled up, shook up world, except for Lola. Hello, LA, Lola. There you go. It's a mixed up, muddled up, fucked up world. It is indeed, especially if you live in Scotland. So if you get banged up in Scotland, and you're a lady, and your cellmate says, Hello, my name's Isla. Yeah, be prepared to make a new friend. Thank you very much, folks. This is Tales from the Jails. Do like, subscribe, and all the rest of it. Bye now.